Okay, welcome to Math 103 College Algebra again. Tonight I'm going to be looking at uh, Section 2.5, it's absolute value equations. I'm going to start with just a, a quick little look at absolute value. Um, I know I've talked about it a lot when I lecture on the past absolute value. What does it mean? I think it's often misunderstood when we always say that absolute value is positive. Um, I'm confident that most of us are going to be good with things like these first three examples. The absolute value of 7 is equal to 7. The absolute value of negative 5 is 5. And the absolute value of 0 is 0. Something that happens is we start to believe absolute value is always positive or you just drop the sign. And you can get away with that if you look at problems like the absolute value of negative 4. If you just drop that negative sign and say the absolute value of negative 4 is 4 or the absolute value of 6, there is no sign, so we know that that's a positive 6. We just drop the sign and say that the absolute value is 6. Then we're okay. We would be okay uh, in getting an answer uh, right, but we don't really have an under, a true understanding, in my opinion. Absolute value, all that it means is the distance from 0. Absolute value is distance from 0. In fact, in every math application, the sign on a number, negative or positive, always and only means distance from zero. So if I look at uh, a number line, I have one set up here. If I want to start at zero and go five units, and I don't care whether I go five units to the right or if I go five units to the left, went a little far there, it doesn't matter how far I want to go or which distance I go. If I only want to go five, I'm caring about the absolute value of five or the absolute value of negative five. The absolute value of 5 is equal to 5 because 5 is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 spaces away from the 0. Negative 5 has an absolute value of 5 because it is also 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 spaces from the 0. Absolute value always only means distance from 0. It's the sign on the number that gives direction. Positive 10 means I'm going to go 10 spaces or 10 units to the right of zero. So here's positive 10 because it's 10 spaces to the right of zero. Negative 10 means I'm going to go 10 spaces to the left of zero, and that would be over here, 10 spaces to the left of zero. If I take the absolute value of positive 10, all I'm talking about is how far from the zero is this 10? It's 10 spaces away. The sign, the positive means to the right. The absolute value of negative 10 is also 10 because although negative 10 is 10 spaces to the left, absolute value just says I don't care about the direction. I only care about the distance, which is 10. So there's a quick look at absolute value and the meaning of absolute value. We'll often look at an absolute value function. F of X equals the absolute value of X. If I'm making a table of values, um, I guess I'm still red here, that's okay. So I'd have x and f of x, and I put in some values for x. Let's go negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, and 3. f of x is the absolute value of negative 3, which is 3. The absolute value of negative 2 is 2. The absolute value of negative 1 is 1, and so on, and so on. The absolute value of each of these numbers should be fairly easy to find. Now I'm going to switch back to blue here. If I graph these, right, I can identify the x and the y uh, intercepts. Where is the function increasing? Where is the function um, greater than zero, less than zero? Where is it equal to zero? Where is the function increasing and decreasing? And then what's the domain and the range? So let me casually graph um, number four here first by plotting points. And I'll tell you what I mean by these bullet points here. If x is negative three, y is three. So there's negative three, three. I'll label some of these points, but not all, because it'll get too messy. Negative two, two, negative one, one, zero, zero. I'll label that point there. Then we've got one, one, 2, 2, 3, 3, and I'll label that point 
So we notice pretty messy graph, but we've got the line coming down on the left hand side going up on the right hand side. To identify the x and the y intercepts, just like always, what value of x will make y equal to zero? And there's your y intercept. What value of y makes x equal to zero? And there's your x intercept. Where is it increasing, decreasing? Um, notice that to the right of zero, this is increasing. To the left of zero, it's decreasing. Okay, when is the function positive, negative, or zero? For number four, the domain is the set of all real numbers because there's no value of x that x can't be. Notice it goes all the way to the left um, on the x-axis and all the way to the right. My range, the lowest value is the zero here, and then it goes up from there. So my range is a set of y values such that y is greater than or equal to zero. I think it helps a lot to graph these first. Now what I might do, the way I often tell students to, gra uh, to graph these, look at number five. What value of x will give me a zero inside the absolute value? That would be x equals zero. So I'm going to find f of zero. The absolute value of zero is zero, plus two is going to be two. So that gives me the point zero, two. This is linear because it's x to the first. So I'm going to pick a value to the right of two. Let's use x value of three. F of three is the absolute value of three plus two, which is five. So that gives me the point three, five. And because it's linear, I know that we're going to go increasing linearly. I'd pick a value of x less than the zero. Let's use negative three. F of negative three is the absolute value of negative three plus two. The absolute value of negative three is three plus two is five again. So negative three, five. And here's the other side. And I didn't get that space perfectly, so it looks like it's falling over a little bit but you get the picture. The following, I didn't leave much space for eight and nine, but let's, uh, let's look at six and seven first. First, what I would do is I'd say, you see the x plus two, what value of x will make the x plus two equal to zero? That will happen when x is negative two. When x is negative 2, y will be 0. Now I'd pick a point to the right. I'm going to use 0. f of 0 is the absolute value of 0 plus 2, which is 2. So there's 0, 2. x plus 2 is linear. So I know I'm going to have a line going up to the right. I'd pick a value of x to the left of the negative 2. I'm going to use negative 4 f of negative 4 is the absolute value of negative 4 plus 2, whoops, put that absolute value bar too soon. Negative 4, I did it again. We'll get it right this time, plus 2. That's the absolute value of negative 2, which is 2. So I've got negative 2, 2, and the graph goes up to the left. You will notice a sense of symmetry here. Number seven is going to be the same way. Two X minus three, I'm going to let that equal zero. So two X would equal three, X equals three halves. So one, two, three, three halves is right here. So there's my three halves zero. This is linear. With a slope of 2, I could just say I'm going to go up 2 and over 1 and up 2 and over 1. I don't like to do that. I'm going to pick a value of x like 3. f of 3 is the absolute value of 2 times 3 minus 3, and that's going to be 3. So I have the point 3, 3. If I pick a value of x to the left, I like 0. I'm going to squeeze that in here, so f of 0 is the absolute value of 2 times 0 minus 3. Absolute value of negative 3 is 3 again. 0, 3. And here's that symmetrical 
V shape. And I can do this each time to graph these. Okay, you'll notice that for number six, the domain is all real numbers. The range, however, zero is the lowest y value. So the y values, I'm squeezing this in, is greater than or equal to zero. Number seven, same thing. The domain is all real numbers. Zero is the smallest y values. My range is everything greater than or equal to the zero. For number eight, I'm going to switch my other canvas over here. I might have to go back and forth to make sure I use the right equation. But we have f of x equals the absolute value. We'll double check it. Yep, x plus 1 minus 2. What value of x will give me a zero inside the absolute value bars. When will x plus one equal zero? That happens when x equals negative one. So I'm definitely gonna find f of negative one. Negative one plus one inside the absolute value. So that's the absolute value of zero. Minus two is negative two. So negative one, negative two. Now that point will always give you that vertex, that bottom most point. So I'm going to do the same thing. Pick a value to the right. Let's use zero. That'd be zero plus one minus two. The absolute zero plus one is one and the absolute value of that is one. So we have negative one. So zero negative one. Also notice my slope is one. I can go up one and over one and count out my slope if I would like to there as well. My slope is 1. I can go up 1 and 1 to the left and up 1 and 1 to the left. And you can even double check that. This appears to be negative 3, 0. Well, what is f of negative 3? Absolute value of negative 3 plus 1 minus 2. Negative 3 plus 1 is negative 2. The absolute value of the negative 2 is a positive 2 minus 2, and that would be 0. So that is graphed correctly. Okay, number nine would work the same way. Um, let's go ahead and do it. If you don't want to watch it, you can fast forward the video, but I'm going to go ahead and graph that one as well. So we have f of x equals the absolute value of negative 2x plus 5. Let me confirm that. Okay, so negative 2x plus 5, when will that equal 0? When negative 2x equals negative 5, when x equals positive 5 halves. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Now 5 halves is 2 and a half, so that's right here. So that would be 5 halves 0. I'm going to pick a point again to the right and the left. I'm going to go and use 0 f of 0, negative 2 times 0 plus 5, that's the absolute value of 5, which is 5, so 0, 5. Now something else you'll notice, I went 2 and a half to the left. If I go a half and then if I go 2 and a half to the right, so that's at 5, it, because the absolute value functions are going to be symmetrical, if I go and I find f of 5, I should get the same value for y. So I have the absolute value of negative 10 plus 5. That's the absolute value of negative 5 again, which is 5. So yes, that is correct. So 5, 5 is a point. I need to see uh, at least three points for this in order for me to accept uh, answers on an assessment because I want to always see the vertex here and I want to see at least one point on either side. Okay, so that's graphing absolute value functions. The next thing I want to look for is, or, or look at, is how to solve absolute value equations. So, for example, number 10, suppose 5x plus 3 equals negative 4. Now, first of all, um, let's look up above. If k is a positive number, so k has to be positive, because remember, the absolute value is distance from 0, and it's treated just like a positive number. 
So the absolute value can never be a negative. So the first thing I look at in number 10 is that there's actually no solutions in number 10 because there's no way to take the absolute value and get a negative, okay? Also notice, therefore, if the absolute value of ax plus b is equal to k, the ax plus b is either a positive k or a negative k. So let's look at number 11. First thing I want to do is I want to add 3 to both sides and isolate that absolute value. So I have the absolute value of 1 minus 2x equals 4. That 1 minus 2x either is a positive 4 or the 1 minus 2x could be a negative 4. Because if the 1 minus 2x, if this 1 minus 2x is negative, I'd have the absolute value of negative 4 which is a positive 4 minus 3 would equal to 1. If the 1 minus 2x is a positive 4, I'd have the absolute value of positive 4 minus 3, which is still 1. Okay, so I want to keep in mind that I need to look at the two possibilities that the 1, the 1 minus 2x is either a positive 4 or a negative 4, and I wrote negative 5. And then I'm going to solve that. So negative 2x equals 3. x would be negative 3 halves. If I subtract the 1, negative 2x is negative 5, so x is 5 halves. Those are my two solutions. You will likely get two solutions here. So number 12 3 fourths x minus 6 equals 15. That 3 fourths x minus 6 is either a positive 15 or the 3 fourths x minus 6 can be a negative 15. And then I need to solve both of those equations. I'm going to add the 6. 3 fourths x equals 21. Multiply both sides by 4 thirds. So that all cancels out, and x equals 21 divided by 3 is 7 times 4 is 28. So one of my solutions is x equals 28. Here, if I add 6, 3 fourths x equals a negative 9. And again, I'm going to multiply both sides by the reciprocal there, the negative by the 4 thirds. 4 thirds times 3 fourths will give me the 1x. Negative 3 divided by 3 is negative 3 times 4 is negative 12. So those are my two solutions for number 12. Notice again number 13. I don't know why I put two examples in there with a negative, but there are no solutions because the absolute value of the 1 minus 2x cannot equal a negative 3. Okay. We'll just have a couple of more uh, examples here. Number 14. First thing I need to do is add the 5. So the absolute value of the 3x minus 2 equals 3. And again, therefore, the 3x minus 2 is either a positive 3 or the 3x minus 2 is negative 3. Solve both of these equations, you'll get two solutions. Both would work. Add the 2. 3x equals 5, so x is 5 thirds. Here I'm going to add the 2. 3x equals negative 1, so x is negative 1 third. Notice, in this time I just said x equals the 5 thirds, negative 1 third. You can list your two solutions back to back, and that's fine. Number 15, I notice I have a typo. I really meant for this to be just a minus 2, so I'm going to cross that off. And again, the 4x minus 2 is 8, or the 4x minus 2 is negative 8. Every single time, what's inside that absolute value can either be the positive or the negative of the value on the other side. So to finish this out, 4x equals 10 when I add the 2 to both sides. So x is 10 fourths or 5 halves. If I add 2, my 4x would be negative 6, and x would be negative 6 fourths, which is negative 3 
have. It's never a bad idea. I'm not doing it in this video, but it's never a bad idea to take the solutions that you get, the five halves or the negative three halves, substitute them back in for the X to ensure that you actually get a statement that is true. Now you'll notice that number 16 and 17 are slightly different. I have an absolute value on both sides. In short, I really don't need to worry about them on both sides. Um, I can still do that. I can treat this exactly the same as this. Because in reality, what I should do is do this and then again, or x minus 2 equals the absolute value of 1 minus 2x. And you just get redundancy. So it's not necessary to consider them both. Um, so x minus 2 equals 1 minus 2x or x minus 2 equals the opposite of 1 minus 2x. So here I'm going to add 3x to both sides. I have 4x. I'm going to also add the 2 to both sides. So x is 3 fourths. x minus 2 would be negative 1 plus 2x. So I can subtract 2x from both sides add the two to both sides, right? And so X would be negative one half. So I have the two solutions, three fourths, negative one half. I can substitute those back in, okay? Number 17, I'll finish that out. I feel like I'm starting to run long, but that's okay. A little redundancy doesn't hurt. Same thing, the absolute value of two X minus five has to equal one plus X, which I just like writing the x first. I'm going to say that's x plus 1. So my 2x minus 5 equals x plus 1. Or my 2x minus 5 equals x. The opposite of x plus 1. Which is 2x minus 5 equals negative x minus 1. Subtract the x. I have x. Subtract the 5. I'm sorry, add the 5. This one very quickly becomes x equals 6. Here when I add the x to both sides, 3x, I'm also going to add the 5 equals 4, so x equals 4 thirds. So my two solutions are 4 thirds and 6. And then you can double check those. All right, so there's a, a quick look at absolute value uh, functions, how to graph them, as well as solving absolute value equations. I hope to see you back next time.